welcome to another episode of the Edmonds Moms Room podcast. We are so delighted here to have Grace St. John here with us today, psychotherapist. And we are just so lucky. She's going to tell us about the importance of psychotherapy and her passion and really how she can help so many moms that are in need. In my opinion, everyone needs someone to talk to. Absolutely. Life is hard. It is, especially being a mom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your passion and kind of about you. We'd love to hear. Well, as you said, my name is Grace, and I'm actually originally from England, hence the accent. Not Australia. Some people say, ask me if I'm from Australia, but I'm from England. And I've lived here in Seattle about 13 years now. Okay. Yeah, and I'm a psychotherapist, a, I'm a mental health counselor, and a parent. I actually have four children, three biological, and we just started a journey of becoming a foster family so we currently have a little foster oh that's amazing son, yeah living with us so that's a whole nother podcast yes. story oh that's so cool yeah and I part of why I think I'm so passionate about this work coming alongside I'm really just supporting parents mm-hmm. and offering them some a bit of education and just some support mm-hmm. I think part of why I'm passionate about it is because I really struggled myself when my son was born, I wasn't working, and well, I was at home, which is a lot of work, but I wasn't working in the traditional sense, and it was just really hard. And as the years kind of went on, actually, when he turned about three, I just started to feel like I don't even like myself as a parent. Like, I just, this isn't working. And so I realized I really needed some help, and I ended up going back to graduate school to get my master's in counseling. And it was through that experience that I, It was just so helpful for me. I learned so much about my own sort of social emotional needs and just it really transformed then my relationship with my son. And he's 13 now and he's a great kid and we're so connected. And so I think because of my experience and how hard it was for me, I just feel like so passionate about coming alongside especially moms and just helping them know that they can that, 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 that can be changed like we don't have to be stuck I think sometimes when you're a parent you just feel so stuck in these kind of relational patterns mm-hmm. and I just think we can actually grow and change and learn and so I just that's a big part of my passion okay nice mm-hmm. I think it it almost it kind of humanizes you to Absolutely. hear that you're a parent you know mm-hmm. and you've been through it and have gone through that that journey mm-hmm. uh, so thank you for sharing that yeah and will you tell us a little bit about the, I guess the, speci- the specialty of you, you and your practice is that you go to mom's homes, mm-hmm. which is really special. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the thought behind that? Yeah. And I love that you said it humanizes me because a, a big part of my work is, I think, inviting people to be humans as parents, to be human parents. I think there's so much pressure, isn't there, on parents to be perfect and sort of have it all together and I just think if we can be human, then we can be more successful in all of the things that we're good at and all the things that we struggle with. And so part of that is me going to people's homes. I just think I, when I, actually when my son was born, he was born in England, and we had, in England, it's not a perfect system, but they have midwives who come to your home after the birth. It's not quite like call the midwife, but, you know, it's yeah. it's really lovely and... I mean, there's so many factors if you've had a baby. I mean, sometimes you can't even walk, Mm -hmm. you know, and what if you really, I mean, postpartum depression, that's a real thing. And when you're depressed, you can't do much. You can't get out and go and find a therapist or, you know, go to an office. And then you have to think about finding someone to watch your child. Just seems like it's it's so many barriers for for women, especially to access the care they need, having mm-hmm. particularly having had a baby. Yeah, and so I think there's something that breaks down those barriers when I can offer coming to the home that feels part of like the therapeutic journey of healing. Yeah, yeah is to say I can come to you and you don't have to. I don't know, make this effort to squeeze into your genes or whatever the sort of cultural myth that women, yeah. we sort of breathe. It's the air we breathe, isn't it? These cultural myths of yeah. like, oh, you, you can have it all, really? Right. No, actually you can't. <laughs> and it's hard, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, you use the example, postpartum depression. Mm-hmm. What that brings for me is like a diagnosis that people 
like don't really want to identify with and maybe um, just like from my own personal um, journey when I was a first time mom I you know I didn't fit the categories when the Mm -hmm. doctor asked you the postpartum depression but I definitely wasn't quote unquote normal or my normal self whatsoever and it was almost like a postpartum anxiety that you know, whether or not you want to label yourself any diagnosis at all, I think the value in just having someone to speak to mm-hmm. about everything, all the changes, mm-hmm. you identify one way before you're a mom. Absolutely. And then you have to, like, create this whole new identity as a partner, as a mom, you know. So I think it's it's almost just a necessity that we should start. I, I think pelvic floor therapy is a necessity, mm-hmm. and I think mental health therapy is a necessity. Mm-hmm. You know, these are the the things that I, I think people really need. And you might not know you're missing until mm-hmm. you you kind of start to, maybe it's three years down the line, like you said. For mm-hmm. me, it's four and a half years down the line when I realized, yeah. like, oh, I should probably start working through some of this, mm-hmm. else I'm going to put it on my children. Absolutely, yeah. And so, anyways, I went on a tangent there. But it's it's nice to, like hear you say that too you know yeah and I think that I, I if you want to categorize it, I'm, I'm pretty sure I had postpartum depression but I think I, I like to talk I like to talk to parents more about like our emotional well-being I think that's a much easier phrase than mental health I think sometimes we talk about mental health there's so much stigma even still yeah. about what that might look like mm-hmm. and I think it's more about like you know it's like anytime we go through a hard change in life we're probably just not going to be doing so well emotionally. And so we some we often need support. Mm-hmm. It's no different than if you, after you've had a baby and there's a lot of physical things, you're going to need maybe some support with that. And it's the same with our emotions. And I think particularly f- what I see, and I know for myself as a parent, you can be a very highly successful person, but when we have our children, there's something of our personal narratives that kind of, Go, I say it like goes online. It's like our own stories. And I've worked with people who've had extensive trauma in their childhood, right? And then, and they've done great. They've overcome and they're successful. There's something about having your own baby that brings that back very loudly. And so I think a lot of the work is also tending to our own wounds as parents. Like, where did we, because all of us had human parents, whether, and we can love our parents. I certainly love mine. But there were things about my story that I had to really contend with when I had my own children. In order, it's exactly like you said, I don't want to pass those wounds on to them. Yeah. I need to be able to, again, be a human and like tend to my own pain and my own stories that were not wonderful mm-hmm. so that they, my children can be free to have a different experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Let's italicize that and put that everywhere. <laughs> It's so it's so true. So it's also really hard for people to reach out. I mean, yeah. you know, so it's not like you go home from the hospital or if you're, you know, have a midwife birth at home. That's lovely. You know, how, like, how do you even access? One of the biggest barriers for me is, like, when I have patients that need to find someone to work with and the wait lists are out of, con- you know, we can't really find providers. Mm-hmm. Are you accepting new patients? I am. Okay, lovely. I and I have this face that you can see, but that's like, and it's I'm starting to feel like I'm getting pretty full. Yeah, there's only I feel like limit my own limitations, and that even as you speak, I'm like I wish I could be superhuman and see everyone and help everyone. Right. But I think what you're speaking to is there is a real lack. Yeah. Of, of that kind of care that we need, Mm -hmm. and that's hard. Yeah. So how does someone find a a counselor or someone to talk to what is the yeah I think from my experience a lot of it is word of mouth to be honest because I think there's something about going to see a counselor that's so personal it's Mm -hmm. such a vulnerable thing I find most people who come to me it's because somebody they know knows me Mm -hmm. so then it feels a bit more a little safer right I know this person and let me tell you about them, and they're really good, and I can sort of trust them. Absolutely. Then that seems to be a massive, I don't know, that that seems to help people get over some of that barrier, because I think part of the barrier is just feeling vulnerable. Totally. Like, I don't know who this person is and what. They're going to come to my house, or I've got to tell them all my trauma. Yeah. It's very nerve-wracking. 
Yeah. And so I think that's really word of mouth is probably the most, uh, I don't know, the, the method that seems to be most effective. But I, I think it's just a really broken system. I, I don't know how to not just name that, that mm. there's, not enough, there's not enough good mental health practitioners out there. Yeah. And it's really hard to find them. And yeah. if, you're, if you're not feeling well, that's also problematic because how do you find the energy already it's really you're not feeling well yeah so I don't uh, it's a systems problem yeah yeah it will we'll put your information in the show yeah. notes so the last people to sign up to get on your schedule will yeah. be lucky but as far as I guess yeah it's interesting to you have to have a different energy to want to seek help but I think there's also this piece that like just deal with it and move on Mm, oh huge and and not uh at least I see that you know Mm -hmm. like and I experienced it myself Mm -hmm. like oh your shit doesn't really matter yeah like just go on with it you know yeah like you haven't been through a massive trauma like yeah you so depressed (laughs) right so is there what would you say to someone who's kind of experiencing that or at least self-talking maybe they they're like my problems aren't worthy of talking Mm -hmm. to someone about Mm -hmm. um you know, do you have anything that you say to those moms? I would just say that you have intrinsic value and worth. And so it, it's time to stop dismissing that because that's what I'm hearing, that you're dismissing something that's really important. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that, again, I've spoken a little bit to this, but there's this cultural myth that particularly for women and moms, you have a baby, right, and then you have to be perfect. There's so It is so pervasive. It's like the air we breathe. And so many parents I work with, you know, they come home and they tell me these stories. And I'm like, man, it is everywhere. And I just want to say, you know, it's time to start shifting that that story and to say, actually, we're all we we can be good enough. We can be good enough. And that's actually what our children need. They need us to be good enough. They actually don't need us to be perfect and they need us to be human so that they can access their own humanity and part of being human is to say, I actually matter, and what happened to me mattered, and pain is pain. It doesn't matter whether you went through a tremendous, abusive, awful, traumatic childhood, or if you, you still suffered, and how, do, and how do we stop dismissing our pain as women, mm-hmm. and to say, actually, it's time to pay attention to that. Yeah. I found out recently, actually, that the same neurological pathways that fire up when we get physically hurt happen with our emotional pain. Wow. It's the same part of our brain. So there's something about our emotional pain that we have to tend to. Yeah. Otherwise, it will come out in other ways. Mm-hmm. And so just to, to value who you are as women is what I would say to those women because it matters. And you might not need years of counseling. I've worked with people and I've said, let's do six weeks. Let's just do a bit of education, a bit of help, a bit of support. Let's develop some reflective practices. And that can be great. Mm-hmm. That can just be that little bump that they need. Right. That's great. So instilling tools. Yeah. Cool. A bit of education. A yeah. bit of, I think a lot of it is this reflective versus reactive parenting thing. Mm-hmm. We, we kind of get stuck in these very reactive, and that's often because of our own stories that sort of get activated, and then we don't know what to do, and we panic, and then we just lash out. or we. And so part of it is making sense of why we're behaving how we're behaving and what's going on with us, and how can we then take a breath and show up a little differently. Nice. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. So it's easy to it's easy to, you know, say that and mm-hmm. that's what people, you know, like that is so healing. Mm. I think what needs um I'm freezing a little bit because I'm trying to think of like the missing link between a mom who's sitting here listening to this mm. and is like, "Yes, I need to do all those things." but can't necessarily integrate that into her life because there's so much shame and guilt around mm-hmm. different aspects of her own personal stories or mm-hmm. failures or whatever whatever that is. Mm-hmm. So it's just so important to speak with someone, Absolutely. you know, so you, you're you not, I don't know. It, you can listen to all the self-help stuff Absolutely. you want mm-hmm. without validation from someone listening, a skilled mental health mm-hmm. professional. Mm-hmm. I think that it it falls short, mm-hmm. you know. I, I really think that's why it's like everyone needs that because mm-hmm. we all have a story. We all have a story. And like it, whether you think you're, 
I've never met someone who thinks they have the most perfect life ever. Maybe, yeah. maybe. <laughs> they like to pretend, but when right. you really there's ask always, them, there's always cracks. some shit. There's a few cracks yeah. in there. <laughs> and, and to you, it feels like a heavy thing, but maybe to someone else, they'd be like, that's your shit? Like, yeah. that's mm-hmm. what you carry? But it's just because we assign these emotions, you mm-hmm. know, and, and then decide to live with them for the rest of our lives. And, and pass them on to our children. Yeah, our children's right, children. right. So it's just, it's so interesting to, when I hear you say that, I'm like, I was recently... You know, I have done so much, um, personally, I have done so much, like, self-help, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. explored meditation and personal growth and different things. But it wasn't until I started speaking mm-hmm. to a counselor that I really feel like I have been able to break down certain barriers or stories yeah. I was telling myself mm-hmm. so I can show up differently for my children. Because mm-hmm. everything that you're saying about passing on, mm-hmm. you know, to your children and things like that, that that was my biggest fear is Absolutely. like you know to pass the the yeah. traits on mm-hmm. that you don't want to you know yeah we always say I swear I wouldn't do that and you're yeah. like I'm doing it yeah. I swear I would never say this to my child and you right. yourself right. doing it right so I think the personal work it's it's I mean if you can do it by yourself that's great but I think it's so mm-hmm. hard yeah and so I just I honor what you do so much because. I personally have found so much value and same with my clients. Like it is life changing. Mm. So I, I think if every mom could just have access yeah. to speaking with someone in, you know, call it counseling, call it whatever you want to call it, you know, cause there's stigma that comes with counseling. Um, mm-hmm. for, you know, so anyways, to nor- yeah. I wish it was more normalized. normalized. And I think what you're speaking to is this idea that we're wired for connection, aren't we? And so I think we oh, can, that there, there's again, this, it's very, and I, I'm not from this culture, so I can see it from a slightly different place. But there's such a strong place in the American culture to sort of be individual and to sort of figure out yourself. And self sufficiency is is highly valued in this culture. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. But what we've learned through decades of research is actually change comes through relationships. I can't see my face. I find, I find that very interesting. And yet my face is the most expressive part of my body. So I need someone else's face so I can make sense of my face. I can't really do that with a book. A book is not going to reflect back the same way that someone else will reflect back to me. And then we're, we're thinking about our children. How, are they, how do they learn and grow? It's through relationship. It's through attachment. It's through love. Mm-hmm. They, they're not going to learn through reading a book I mean they will I'm not yeah. saying that's that's redundant but where we see growth is through relationships and so I think that's what you're speaking to is yeah. if if we can't access that kind of care it, we are somewhat limited I think in how we can grow personally and, and deal with some of those those wounds that the pain the pain that we all carry all of us and yeah so I think but again, how do we access it? That's the that's the right. right that's it goes back. It's the sort of catch twenty two because it is, it's really hard. It's mm-hmm. really hard in this culture to get that. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is a good conversation. Oh, I'm enjoying fun. myself. It's fun. <laughs> um, tell us where you're from. I didn't get into that. So I mean, I read on your website. Yeah, but. I'm from England, <laughs> not Australia. Some people ask me if I'm from Australia, but I've lived here quite a long time. So I've lived yeah. here nearly thirteen years. My son is thirteen. So I'm from Cornwall in England, which is the southwest. It's, like, very beautiful, very rural. Okay. It's just stunning. If you ever go to England, you have to go to Cornwall. So plug for Cornwall. And But actually, I grew up in North Africa. My parents did relief work in Morocco. Okay. So I lived there. I know. So I lived there until I was 15. So I've I've had sort of quite a multicultural life. And when I was in my early 20s, I spent a lot of time in the Middle East. I lived in Egypt for a while. And I actually met my husband in the south of France, in Nice. Sounds oh. so romantic. That is. It was, it was, yeah, that's a whole other story. But yes. Um, and then we lived in London okay. for uh, five years, and then we moved out here. So, so yeah. that's where you... S- okay. So my son was born in London. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And before I, before I moved out here, I w- when I lived in England, I was a teacher. I was an elementary school teacher, primary school teacher. And so I, I think part of what I love in my work as a counselor is I just I love teaching and educating as well because I think that's a huge piece. Mm-hmm. I think we're quite illiterate as a culture on emotional health. So I love, I think sometimes just if you can understand things, then you can 
I don't know, it can just be really liberating. Yeah, nice. Um, okay, so you work with moms. I do. And then do you work and with... dads. Okay, that's where, <laughs> that's where I was going next. Do you work with the whole family? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm really passionate about empowering women, particularly as parents. I just think if we can have agency as moms in what we do as parents, then... Mm-hmm. It can be so transformative. Like, just own who you want to be as a mom, you know, and just be like, this is me. But I think, yeah, if the dad, I think it can be really helpful to support the dads as well. A lot of my work, and I, so I worked for quite a long time in community mental health, and I was really privileged to do a lot of what they call infant mental health. And so that's basically, it sounds really strange, like infants having counseling, but really it's, you're working with the parent-child relationship. So I would go to the home and I would do, how do we strengthen the bond between the mom and the baby or the dad and the baby, whoever the caretaker was. And um, so often the children are involved in the therapeutic work because you can do so much lovely work when you see the mom or the dad respond and you can be like, oh, what's going on when you said that and how are you feeling? And you can do a lot of the positive uplifting and then what do you want help with How, where are you struggling in that relationship yeah. nice yeah so it can be it can be the whole family it can be just the mom it can be whatever feels helpful and so you still do that that's oh, yeah. still a piece of it so now I do my own okay. I have my own business right yeah and that's okay. what I do cool yeah. it reminds me of that show which one? The, the super nanny. Yes, the super nanny. <laughs> yes. That's probably why people listen to me, because of that show, right? My English accent. Well, and the fact that, like, it's, like, intervening on that relationship, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, I don't remember much about the show except yeah. for her, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, and I think she's quite behavioral, and I'm I my approach is very relational. Mm-hmm. So I do do behavioral intervention with families, but I'm always focusing on the underlying relationship, because that's, I think, the the long that's long term sustainable like I can give you some behavioral tricks Mm -hmm. but it's kind of like a band-aid as opposed to let's get to like really the depth of the the wound like what's really going on here that we might kind of dig a bit deeper oh that's super cool Mm -hmm. well that should be your marketing slogan (laughs) do you want a super (laughs) nanny there we go there we go no I will come to your home with my bag of tricks (laughs) For the deep shit. Yeah, there we go. I don't bring no Band-Aids, people. (laughs) I like that. I really like that. Awesome. Do you have any events or anything you want to share with the listeners? I wish I I did. You know, we, as I said previously, we've we've just become foster family. And so that's kind of been quite consuming. I mean, it's really reminded me of my humanity as a parent, let me tell you that. Um... But not yet. I think I am obviously have my private practice, my business, and I still have space. But in the future, I would like to do some classes cool. because I think that can be a way in. I've done a few in the community. I just don't have any to advertise right now. That's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll put your information in our notes, and yeah. we would love to have a class here for you oh, if you yeah, ever wanted to host wonderful. a class here. Yeah, so, I'd love yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much for being here. and chatting it was my pleasure it It really was my pleasure a lot of fun Mm -hmm. so you can check out grace's information in the show notes today and get in touch with her you need it yes please (laughs) awesome all right thank you thank you Edmonds Moms Room podcast is brought to you by Body Motion Physical Therapy. We help women through pregnancy and beyond so they can live active, confident, and healthy lives.